coming up. Uh, we are going to spend a little time with Mark Rose. So Mark is in the UK as well. He's held the role of CEO of Fawn and Flora International for over 25 years. During this time, he's been instrumental in transforming it from an organization with a handful of active projects into a multifaceted global uh, conservation charity with a work program that has over 100 projects in over 40 countries. So Mark's a zoologist. He has extensive field experience, uh, gained in areas around the world, uh, predominantly Africa and the Asian uh, Pacific. So let's bring Mark in here with us now. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Very well, very well. And thank you for inviting me, Joe. Oh, of and course, good, Mark. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are in the world, to all the people who are watching. Yes, that's right, that's right. We've had a great uh, crew register from all over the world. Um, I can't wait to take a look at the country list. Last year, we had registrations in over 100 countries. So um, it'll be really exciting to take a look and see where, where the crew is joining us. And really exciting this year, we had a huge uh, following uh, register in Malaysia. So it's really great to, to be reaching more areas and have a larger, uh, larger crew joining us. Particularly important getting people from the, on the ground, local people who really understand what's going on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, no question. Well, Mark, let's uh, let's get into it. Let's talk a little bit. So, uh, I'm going to start with our first. Uh, or why don't I just let you, um, uh, you know, introduce yourself a little bit more? You know, I did a general introduction, but give us a little bit of your background. How did you end up uh, in the position you're in? Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, I, I was actually headhunted for the job. Um, people came to me, um, and uh, here I am, 25 years or 27 years actually later. Um, so it's quite flattering being headhunted. I had an extensive experience um, working with local conservation organisations, turning them around, making them work. And I think FFI, 27 years ago in 1993, was uh, not in the shape it was today. So I think that they thought that I could turn it around, and hopefully I have. And it's gone to do some great things over the years. Oh, absolutely. It, it definitely seems uh, to be that way. I mean, uh, those projects in countries all around the world. So I think they definitely, whoever that headhunter was, they picked the right, uh, the right guy for the job. No question. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's, it's been, people say to me, well, you know, you've been in the job a long time. Why, why are you still there? You know, why have you, why have you stuck with FFI? And I say to them, well, it's been like a different job every five years. You know, we've made a quantum leap into different directions, but we've always kept our mission clear and our, our philosophy and strategy clear. We've been very, very focused. But along the way, you know, you, 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 get, you get to where you want to be and then you want to go further. There's a big job to do out there. Um, and the next decade is really, really important. Yeah, no, no question. Absolutely. Um, you know, that's why it's so exciting. I get to work with youth uh, in my day job, broadcasting events to them all over the world. And, you know, it's great to see how switched on they are. It's great to see how they're not waiting till they're grown up. They're making their voices yeah. heard. And they know how important it is uh, for their future to act right now. Yeah. 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 No, no. And I think, I think it, it's dawning on the world. What's happening out there at the moment is coming home to roost. And I think people are actually seeing the evidence for themselves. Whereas before it was just scientists telling them what was going to happen. And yeah. now it's happening. Now it's happening. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's a reality. We're seeing the changes um, everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. So there's uh, these, the breakthroughs um, that you've come out with now. I mean, it sounds really interesting. Why, why now? Why, why, are the, why have these breakthroughs been released? Um, because we're at, we're at a critical time. We're at an absolute critical time uh, in, in, in the world. If you listen to Prince Charles last year, and he so often write about these things, said that we've got, we've got a decade to, to sort this out. Yeah. So whatever we do in the next 10 years is going to determine the fate of the planet. And I used to be a person who used to think that, uh, well, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a pragmatic optimist. And at times I've thought, that, um, <laughs> you know, we were rather kamikaze and that we were suicidal. Uh, and then I've gone on to thinking, no, we're like a good parasite. We'll keep our host alive. But I think we'll do more than that. I think we've got, we've got everything to play for now. We've, we've, got, we've got the technologies. We've got the wherewithal. We know what the problems are. All we need is, is the will and the yeah. power to do it. And that's what we've got to be doing over the next few years. We've got to go nature positive. We've not just 
okay, let's just leave it as it is and let's not do any harm. We've actually got to do nature positive. So we've come up with some some sort of breakthrough things that we, we won't talk about today. Yeah. Um, and if I may, I'll, I'll, I'll start with some of those. We've got, we've got five, five breakthroughs. And the reason that we're doing them now is because the time is right. So, so I'm speaking today to you all because it's a defining moment in human, human history. Our world is under threat. Two existential crises, climate change and destruction of biodiversity coming together, converging. Centuries of destruction and overexploitation have brought us to the brink, and we're now coming to a point that requires unprecedented, urgent global action to save what we're calling Our One Home. Now, Our One Home was a campaign that we launched last year, and it called for 500 billion to be made available, 500 billion to be made available from governments and the private sector to support local conservation efforts. This is, we think, a conservative starting point when you consider that the UN Convention on Biological Diversity estimates that we need 900 billion, and that at the moment we're only putting in 200 billion. But irrespective of the figure, we know that change needs to happen. This year, we're going a step further. Through our extensive experience in conservation, through knowledge gained from speaking regularly to governments, advising boards, in the private sector on conservation action and from understanding the very, very real needs and challenges that local conservationists face. We're calling on global organisations, governments, businesses and civil society to do what's required to protect and rebuild our planet, to join us in making the change that will transform our relationship with nature. We're calling these changes our five breakthroughs for nature a series of sudden and dramatic and important developments that will move us swiftly from commitments, of which there are many, that we've all heard them, to action which we hope will happen. We want to happen and must happen. Today, I just want to share some of these with you that, in the hope that they will inspire actions you can make, whether as an individual, an organisation, a local community group or government. These topics are also for discussion. The FFI door is open to you, so if you're inspired, head to our website and get in touch. So, Joe, shall I go on with the five breakthroughs? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to pop you up nice and full screen and let's let's definitely get into them. Okay. So, we, we must adopt nature-positive decision-making at all levels. We're all responsible for the future, but it's within government and the powerful private sector that we can make fundamental change that will protect and restore nature. Currently, there is a do no harm mindset in which we manage our impact on nature. We need to shift this to nature positive where every decision that we make proactively protects and restores nature. The recent Dasgupta review, which looked at the economics of biodiversity, highlighted the importance of this approach. Crucially, it said that we are part of nature not separate from it. It seems simple, doesn't it? But not everybody appreciates that. And certainly the actions that we see don't bear that out. FFI's work to promote nature positive decision making at government level spans almost a century. We've helped broker transboundary nature protection agreements between Liberia and Guinea, China and Vietnam, Rwanda, Uganda and DRC. We've secured a UK microbe ban and we've led the way in calling for urgent global moratorium on deep sea mining. It's no secret that the greatest global economic catastrophe that we are currently facing, COVID-19, has been caused through a lack of respect for nature. We must make our recovery from it in a nature positive way and, and a, a, a positive way also for climate change. So what can change? There are clear actions that can happen. We need transparent and time-bound targets for achieving nature and climate goals. We need accountability against these measurable milestones so that governments can track and make the necessary changes to ensure they meet their goals. We need to look at how policies across all areas work together to achieve nature and climate change goals. We need to stop investing in green energy with one hand 
while subsidising fossil fuels in the other. And we need to encourage open access to affordable and appropriate technologies across the world, from vaccines to zero carbon energy. The private sector too can make a difference. We have worked closely with the private sector partners to support in programmes that drastically reduce greenhouse gas emissions or transition away from harmful energy sources. We have seen scores of sustainability pledges from many large corporates over the past 18 months and there have been many more to come. We want to see these pledges and ambitions embed in the very fabric of these companies, not just as bolt-on extras or statements. We want to see a nature positive agenda throughout the whole operation of private companies, how they source their produce, how the products are disposed, how they're recycled, the types of materials used and how the materials are manufactured. Suppliers distribute every facet and corner of the business must consider nature. We want to see greater collaboration across sectors. For example, can we take learnings from the food, large food manufacturing sectors investing in sustainable agriculture and apply them to sustainable cotton farming? You know, why hasn't it been done already? And we must ensure that our impact on nature is measured just as closely as the same breath as climate when it comes to ESG, the important principle that govern business, environmental, societal, and government standards. If we can bring nature into the heart of business and government decision making, then we're already on a strong path. Breakthrough two, to deliver 500 billion annually to protect and restore nature. A huge sum, but one that we can, we've already broken down into actions as part of our One Home campaign. So if you haven't seen the campaign, please do head to the FFI website and find out how you can get involved. The natural world is crying out for more funding, and this can come from a number of areas. We know that economies are strapped following the pandemic. We know that businesses are reeling from the changes they've had over the last 12 months. We're not asking for a magic money tree, but what we're saying is if we don't look at this closely, there won't be any trees, let alone ones that have money hanging from them. Nature is crucial for the global economy, According to experts, it's the, the price tag is $125 trillion. The pandemic's cost $36 trillion. However, nature receives a fraction of the funding given to harmful industries. We want to see government, businesses and donors redirect and increase cash that goes into protecting the natural resource and the natural world. So how do we do this? Where does it come from? So, increased grant funding earmarked for nature by wealthy countries in poor, for poorer countries, create conditions that enable increased private sector and philanthropic investment. There is real momentum here at the moment, and we've seen Jeff Bezos, one of the world's richest men, commit 10 billion to climate change. We need to help, we need to help these donors spend the money properly and get the money down to the local level. And last, remove subsidies that are harmful to nature include fossil fuels and destructive agriculture, redirect that support to local conservation initiatives. As I said at the beginning, 500 billion sounds a lot of money, but it actually isn't when you consider that we spend more than that on fizzy drinks. So the third breakthrough, devolve decision-making and funding to empower local level conservation. Empowerment of local actors permeates every facet of FFI's 150 conservation projects across over 40 countries. That means technical, financial and other support to local organisations, government departments and communities in country with limited resources. Protecting nature and transforming thousands of lives. The people who know best how to safeguard nature are those who live alongside it. We know what it takes to support them. We have experience at that. Government and policy bodies must reform structures of decision making to greatly increase support for local communities, conservation leaders and capacity locally. We want to see far greater share of aid flowing directly to local conservations. National governments must actively support these initiatives through policies and approaches, and we want to empower those local voices to hold national governments and corporations, investors to, to account, to delivering on their nature and climate goals and removing the drivers of nature loss. So breakthrough four, I think recognise that nature and climate change crises are inseparable. 
avoiding emissions and removing carbon from the atmosphere by protecting nature and halting deforestation and destruction of other natural carbon stores must be central to climate action. If we do this, then not only do we protect nature, but we create a base to restore habitats, making this a double-edged sword in the battle against climate change, a win-win situation. More habitats mean more carbon sequestration, lower overall carbon emissions. It's win-win, as I say. We see the need for action across three areas. A halt to the logging of old growth forests and the removal of peatlands. Um, in the Stern report, which was published sort of nearly 10 years ago now, um, he made the point that if we stopped all the illegal destruction of habitats such as forests and peatlands, um, that would be saving as much as the whole of the transport system of the world. So, you know, really, really strong reason there for um, increasing our efforts to uh, conserve these habitats. Prioritization and in protection of ancient established marine sites, old growth mangrove forests, seabeds and undisturbed ocean sediment are vital for storing carbon. These carbon sinks must be protected. That means through natural coastal defences such as coral reefs and continuing to expand mangroves and seagrass, which are fantastic for creating low carbon environments. FFI has long been at the forefront for calling for a moratorium on, sea bed, on deep sea bed, sea bed mining too. This is a highly destructive practice and we've put a lot of pressure on governments and, and the corporate world to prevent this. The impact of deep sea mining can be catastrophic on ocean habitats. And number three, integrating nature into global and national climate commitments. This is so important. We have to ensure ambitious nature-based targets are incorporated in the country's commitments, especially as we approach COP26 in Glasgow. A crucial moment in time for all of our futures, and that must take place in the autumn. And last breakthrough, grow nature positive impact through technological innovation. <clears throat> And this is last but no means least. Technology has the power to be our great saviour for our battle to protect our planet. However, it's also the cause of many of the ills of today. We need to harness it for good. In 2015, FFI helped to establish Wild Labs, the world's first technology-focused interactive hub dedicated to conservation. It brings together conservationists and tech experts to share data, and tools that can help protect species and habitats worldwide. Wild Labs has helped to put satellites into space to track wildlife movements and use facial recognition technology to help combat illegal wildlife trade and wildlife crime. We've been pioneers in the wider use of environmental DNA to monitor and document wildlife and to build the case for greater protection. So we know what good technology can do. However, for the conservation world to really harness the use of technology for good, we need to see collaboration across all sectors to drive innovation, not just in conserving specifically, but in solving the challenges that destroy and the challenge the future of our natural habitats. We want to see the rollout of new digital technology to improve field-based data gathering for key nature areas, including protected areas, to better monitor wildlife and wildlife threats and to help inform conservation responses including preventing and responding to wildlife crime. The brightest minds in academia and technology stop developing technology that damages the planet such as new deep sea mining machines and answer the urgent call to help us collectively protect nature. So in summary here are the five key breakthroughs that we would like to see. Number one, adopt nature positive decision making at all levels. Two, redirect financing to deliver an additional 500 billion to local conservation efforts. Three, devolve decision making and funding to empower local level conservation. Four, recognizing the health of nature as inseparable and integral to climate stability. And five, grow nature positive impact through technological innovation. The challenges we face are great, but we can be inspired by past advances as we seek to achieve new ones. 
New partnerships will need to be forged, deeper and stronger collaboration across sectors, geographies and expertise. If we are to create a sustainable future for this planet, we must all work together. Humanity faces an uncertain future, but we believe these five breakthroughs for nature represent our best chance of protecting and restoring our ecosystems on which we all depend. Reversing the loss of biodiversity that is fundamental to life on Earth and avoiding catastrophic climate change. They are integrally mixed. That's it from me. Um, I think I've said enough. All right. Um, yeah, I, ab I, absolutely, Mark. I think probably raised some questions there. Yeah, no question. I think you really laid out, um, you know, a roadmap. It's there. You know, we, we know what we have to do. I think the will is starting to build behind it. So I think we really are in an exciting time right now uh, where we can see some movement. What really caught my attention was the fifth one, the technology. We had an event this morning where we connected um, with Andrew from the, the Kakapo Project, a recovery in New Zealand. And they were talking about just the incredible technology they're using. They, you know, they, they know which bird uh, is using the feeders and it only activates for certain birds. Um, they can tell when which two birds have made it and how successful it was. It, it's incredible what technology is doing. I'm wondering what new technology gets you excited? What new conservation technology is exciting for you? I think the whole aspect of, of um, I, I think there are technologies that are, which are evolving now, which will help us um, with some of the biggest problems that, that we, we see today. Um, and uh, I think most people will be aware of the, uh, the Duke of Cambridge's Earthshot Prize that he's put out there to, to encourage uh, new minds and new initiatives in helping us conserve our planet. And, and we're seeing a lot of those come in the door at the moment. And there's some really uh, interesting ones around looking at how we clean up the marine environment. I'm not going to tell you exactly what they are at the moment because they will be announced later. But, you know, the, 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 I'm sorry to say, but, you know, um, these are the sort of things that are exciting me. Um, that if we can find a way to to clean up the sea and restore our marine environments, that will be just a, a fantastic thing to do. Oh, absolutely. And, All right. And the technology is being developed. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's exciting. Um, all right, very cool. So um, when you uh, were talking about the breakthroughs, you did talk about local voices. Um, why are local conservation efforts so important? Well, local conservationists know what's going on in their own patch and and they are the most so they have a they have an investment. They've got skin in the game for one thing. they live there. yeah and and they know what to do and they need the resources and the ability to do it. So it's helping local conservationists uh, uh, um, achieve their own aspirations, really. And, and so there's a, there's a commitment there which you won't get from external sources. So, um, you know, the most, and we've seen it, we see the most effective conservation efforts, whether they be in Mayan communities in Belize to, to sustainable flower harvesting in the Cape of Cape of South Africa. The, these, these are actions and activities which really make a long term and sustainable difference. Yeah, yeah, no question. I mean, it's the whole thing. Um, you know, you're, you're always going to get more buy in for the community when it's, it's, it's run by the community and people are empowered. And it's not someone who, you know, parachutes in and uh, is, is telling you know, people how to use their resources or that, you know, their knowledge is, is, is better than theirs. And, and, you know, it's only recently that in the, in the last sort of 20 years that we've take, people have been taking that approach. You know, when, when I first started at FFI, um, the, 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 the sort of raison d'etre, the, the normality of conservation efforts was just paratrooping people in, doing a project for five years and then wonder where the, where the money was going to come from to, 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 uh, to carry on. Hmm. Um, it's only in this last 20 years what we've seen a real realisation and appreciation that, that it needs to start locally and it needs to finish locally yeah yeah absolutely so uh you know i know ffi works closely with private companies to help advance their sustainability yeah. agendas yeah. why is it so important that you have a seat at that table well i think it's more than that it's it's more than a seat i think if you if you consider that some private companies have a bigger gdp than than some countries do so there and and impact 
globally across the world. I mean, you know, the, the, there are companies which which touch touch almost every country in the world, and they're managed from a central base, maybe in London, maybe in New York, maybe in Switzerland, uh, maybe in Singapore. So you you can access great change over 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 a large global area by getting talking to a company at the highest level and then if you can integrate their uh, uh, you know biodiversity factors consideration of nature into their system that trans that has a transformational effect across the globe yeah yeah absolutely no question you know a real theme that's popped up a lot uh you know in the first 12 hours of the festival is uh, how finance can play a role, how uh, we can change the way we make investments. Um, and, yeah. you know, that's exciting. Green investments are going to, are, are the way of the future and the returns on them look like they're going to be positive, you know, yeah. just as and good, if not better than traditional. So you, you can, you can, you can, there's two things there. You can put investments into green initiatives, but you can also stop investments going into destructive initiatives yep. too. So, you know, we're talking to various banks at the moment about investments into deep sea mining uh, and trying to prevent that happening. And, and, and they're listening. They are listening. Yeah. So uh, we have, I'm sure most people tuning in know COP26 is coming up. What are the priorities for FFI at COP26 this year? Uh, two priorities, really. Um, two threads to what we're doing is, is, is one is, is really making the case for, for biodiversity and nature. Um, you know, we, we don't really just want COP to be talking about emissions from fossil fuels. We, we want the COP to really appreciate the role that nature plays in, in climate and, and, and climate um, change. Because if, they, if it doesn't, in, in, the, in the last COPs, a lot of, a lot of the talk omitted nature. So we don't want that to happen. The second thing is we, we want to see that, that where when funds are being directed, they're being directed onto the ground to local organizations and they're not sitting at the tops of, of countries, top, top of the pyramid. So we want to see that money and resources transform transforming down. We want to see more of the G20 countries helping those other countries which cannot afford um, to, um, to, do, to, take, to take the, uh, all, all the prescriptions that we know and love, you know, the things that we know are going to make a difference to conservation. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Mark, what I'd like to do now, we have just enough time. Um, I've got, um, I'm queuing up the, the video for um, the uh, R1 home campaign. Um, so I think that would be a great way to kind of tie things together and then yeah, encourage kind of push people to, to head towards that petition um, and to sign it because you're right, you know, 500 billion a year, it's a start. It's not where we need to be, but yeah. it's it's real movement. And I think enough voices um, from across the planet can can make that happen. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great, that'd be great. And before you do that, Joe, just to yeah. say congratulations on putting such a good festival together. Oh, thanks, Mark. I've, I've already been getting feedback from people who've been watching and they, and they, they think it's a great, great initiative, great initiative. Well, we're we're obviously thrilled that you're able to join us. We have over the course of the weekend, we have several um, uh, people from um, FFI projects who are joining us. So we're gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna head to Iraq right. and to Vietnam. So I mean, we're just thrilled uh, that you're able Brilliant. to join and that people are tuning in and and really taking something from this. Brilliant. Thank you. Well, thank you, Joe. I look forward to seeing the video. All right, here we go. Our well-being, our economies. Everything depends on a healthy planet, and yet we continue to neglect it. You'll have heard, probably more than you'd like to have done, about the devastating decline in biodiversity and nature all around the planet. Our beautiful planet that we call Earth and the existence of countless beautiful species face a serious threat from climate change. In the last 50 years, we've seen wildlife populations fall by nearly 70% as their natural homes and habitats are being destroyed. We cannot underestimate just how vital healthy, functioning ecosystems are to the future survival of our own species. That is why FFI is backing a campaign 
asking governments around the world to put $500 billion every year into the hands of those people who know best how to spend it. Local people who understand local conditions. Я нахожусь в Кыргызстане, где мы реализуем важные проекты по сохранению глобально значимого биоразнообразия на местном уровне. Es una realidad eminente que la tortuga laúd y la tortuga carey del Pacífico Oriental siguen en peligro crítico de extinción. Es por esta razón que necesitamos con urgencia seguir apoyando a las personas y a las organizaciones que trabajan en primera línea. We must all act in unison to minimize our impact on nature and reverse the damage that has been caused to biodiversity. Please sign our petition to make this a reality. Back Our One Home campaign to put power back into the hands of the people who most need it. All right, so I'm going to pop that link up there one more time. Let's keep it up there a little bit longer. So sign the petition, change.org uh, backslash R1 home. Um, and, you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, I grew up with Sir David uh, and his documentary. So, you know, it's great to see him do. so vocal um, and really, um, you know, pushing, you know, just like you're doing with the breakthroughs, really pushing to get this on everybody's agenda. Everybody needs to be thinking about it because the time is absolutely now. And then Mark, I wanna share the website as well so people can dive a little bit deeper, check out some of the amazing projects around the world. So there it is up on the screen, uh, fauna-floor.org. Uh, and then of course, um, you know, a big thing is we wanna drive people. If you like the work that you're seeing, uh, if you're excited by it, then absolutely uh, visit the website and make a donation so that that work can continue happening. Mark, thank you so much. Congratulations on uh, the success. Congratulations on the breakthrough. And I have no doubt uh, you'll make a splash at COP26 this year. Thank you so much, Joe. And thank you for everybody who's watching. And hopefully they'll sign up and uh, join the campaign. So thank you. All right. Well, Mark, have a great rest of the day. And I have no doubt that we'll continue connecting with FFI for some really exciting events uh, in the future and, of course, for classrooms. So thanks so much, Mark. Thank you. We look forward to it. All right.